Fan updates on sports stories across the globe. Aaron Akirajala joins us. Good morning, Aaron. Yeah, good morning, Aaron. To, good morning to you, Doctor. Good morning to you, Rufai. Good morning. Um, let's start it off with the question Rufai has been asking for the past couple of days, which has to do with the vacancy in the Nigeria Football Federation. Um, right now, the Nigeria Football Federation can say that by tomorrow evening they should be announcing. Yes. Who, um, who will take over? Whether it's going to be, we're not sure if it's a lot of law. Although the Federation was still insistent on Jose Pizarro, and we had also Kuku in the mix, but right now the Ministry of Youth and Sports and the Minister, I beg your pardon, has insisted that they widen the search and not just searching for Pizarro. Um, look at other options and see who is best. But of course, you remember the sticking point has to be wages, and with the fact that the Nigeria Football Federation would have to shell out well over three hundred seventy thousand dollars to. Um, Gen okay. Genetra, that will also probably eat deep into their pockets and their negotiations for a new coach. But we'll be getting a new coach by tomorrow, so good news for them. But in the meantime, as we prepare for the double header against Mexico and Ecuador, let's actually talk about the fact that they've released a 30-man list and homegrown talents have actually dominated that particular list of Super Eagles players. So at the moment, the Super Eagles, the, those that play in the local league are kind of happy that the inclusion is happening now and they are getting the opportunity to go out there and show what they can do. Let's actually hope that the new coach will take a liking to homegrown talents. But in the meantime, let's talk about Liverpool yesterday. Um, a lot of people expected them to falter. I did expect them to probably stumble, but they made life a little bit difficult for themselves, but they were ultimately they were able to pull back thanks to that winning goal from Sadio Mane who got it late into the game. And as it stands right now, Liverpool are back on top at the moment with the slightest of margins. Okay, Manchester City still holds the goal difference. Liverpool have actually tied it up. 86 points apiece. The three goal difference right now separates Manchester City and Liverpool. So talking about Manchester City, in the Premier League later on today, Manchester City will be taking uh, on Wolverhampton Wanderers at the Molyneux. A lot is expected in that particular fixture. Some are hoping that it will be a Bermuda skin for Manchester City and maybe they might not be able to turn the screw. But let's see what the Premier League actually holds this evening. It's going to be a late fixture and a lot is expected from the citizens who have won three out of the last four titles that tonight at the Molyneux, they can still turn heads. But in the meantime, one thing that is exciting, several Manchester City fans, we spoke about this yesterday, and Manchester City have gone on to confirm that Erling Haaland is going to be a Manchester City's player moving forward from next season. It's, you see, we hear that the package is well in the region of £200 million, um, putting in bonuses, putting in the wage, and all other add-ons. At the moment, it's huge. It's a very rich offer, I was actually say. In the La Liga, Barcelona literally uh, showed their dominance once again as they put to the sword, the Celta on the day. And uh, when you look at how things have actually played out for Barcelona, they seem to be waxing strong and looking like they might finish the season very high. Now, Tundu, um, one man seems to not be having the best of times, and he wants to complicate his issue right now. His name is Lewis Hamilton, or probably, we me call him Sir Lewis Hamilton. At the moment, he's having a standoff with the FIA, talking about the governing body in Formula One, over jewelry issues. Now, the point is this. Um, pictures were shown of Lewis Hamilton um, in Miami. They've spoken about safety issues concerning jewelries. And Lewis Hamilton is one that likes accessorizing. Let's just put it that way. Um, in Miami, he wore three wristwatches. Well, quite a plethora of rings. Yeah, of course, he has earrings, hand rings, nose rings, uh, three wristwatches. She just mentioned but a few and... A lot of people ask the question, now what is really going on with Lewis Hamilton? Lewis Hamilton got a medical excuse initially for some that needed to be surgically removed. And they gave him a medical pass, but have insisted that the ones that he can take off, he should take them off. And he's having a standoff saying that this don't cost any kind of risk whatsoever. That he likes them, he'll put them on. And the FIA are saying, if you don't do that, we might end up docking your points. Right now, literally, he has 36 points for the season. To hear that he will be docked points for things as flimsy as refusing to take away all the jewelry he wears. We know he likes to accessorize, but come on. I don't know. I don't get it either. Why is he digging his heels in over this issue? It's very simple. 
<laughs> take all the bling off oh. until after, after the, your race. Yeah, it's so it's obvious. But he's defiant. He's defiant that he isn't going to take them off. It's very odd. <laughs> Because you, you are told, yeah. and, and you know this happened with Serena as well. Yeah. You'll recall all the run-ins that she had yeah. with tennis authorities when you're giving a really strict dress code and individuals decide they want to extend that. I'm not a believer in that, to be honest with you. If there's a uniform for whatever sport or she, trade good. or school you attend, adhere to it. True. Very simple. And we, yesterday we were speaking about it. We didn't have the opportunity to sound off on the issue about transgender in sport, which is really turning into a big deal in the United Kingdom. Some are still insisting that they should be allowed to do whatever sport they choose to. Some are saying it gives them an unfair advantage. And doctors have been weighing in on this. Even politicians have also been weighing in on this. What do you hear your thoughts about that? I think there have to be a limit to inclusion. We all believe in inclusion in yeah. an ideal world, but it's not really fair to compromise the integrity of a sport mm -hmm. because you've included people who do have an advantage. I have been, um, there's a sports scientist called Ross Tucker who explained certain things to the BBC that even when you take medication or that hormone reducing medication, for example, a man or somebody who was born as a man who are now identifies as a woman, and you reduce testosterone, that there are lots of things that are not reduced. Your hemoglobin levels, the shape of your skeleton, I was talking about bone density, the shape of your heart and your lungs, that do give an advantage over yes, women in, in the sport. Yes, so I would go with the advice of a sports scientist over anything else, over any politically correct you know, <laughs> behavior. But really, apparently, yeah. though, on a general note, no. the science is still in its nascency and you know, it remains to be seen, which I think is why the IOC have this policy of sort of sitting on the fence and saying each individual sport should decide from the, for themselves the rules within that sport. But I don't think that goes far enough. We cannot have, you know, domination of women's sports in this way. The ideal thing would just be to have a separate transgender category wherever possible, because it's really not fair. No, it's not fair, I must say. Now, we had in Nigeria back in the day that was a female footballer. The, yeah, the goalkeeper. Yes, that ultimately now became... Uh, and then he, he was... Borderline, borderline uh, of the um, of yes, it was borderline between a man and a woman, but and, and he excelled very well as a woman, as a, as a woman. woman. But when it turned into male sports, but so, but for me, mm. the science is still at its infancy. Something will push the boundary on. Okay, the sad reality it has come to stay. All right, when we say inclusion, yes. You know, you can make the very strong case against borders and things like that. You know, let's keep it on the edge. But let's not also deceive ourselves. Inclusion has come to stay. This is going to be the way of the world. That's the sad reality. Just like I can't wrap my, round, my mind around about the fact that a decathlon winner in the Olympics, Bruce Jenner, is now Caitlin. But even Caitlin does <laughs> not good. believe in having You're men, good. people so who are born as men, I, in I female can, sports. So I, and I, I will tend to listen to so her because she should I can't know. wrap my mind around. But going forward, this is going to be the way of the world. And the science cannot say that he has all the submissions on it already because it's still evolving. Anyway, so we're running, when it comes to we're that... We're running out of time. I think the key question is the question you raised last about whether or not there should be a separate category mm -hmm. for transgender women in sports. Yeah. And we may well probably get to that in the future. But I was going to ask you about UEFA, mm -hmm. the new uh, rules, the shake-up. Uh, now from 32 games to 20 uh, to 36, yes, and a total of about uh, 125 to 139. Radical change. Some clubs out. will, you know, may end up. Some countries may end up having seven teams uh, in the UEFA competition. Do you think this is fair? And do you think this is all about money? Because it will mean more money, more revenue coming in. And then Haaland, we heard that that deal has been sealed uh, with uh, Man City. Mm. So will he end up being the missing link? Uh, that uh, Pep <laughs> Guardiola that, is looking for. Rufa is laughing. Rufa is Will he fit in <laughs> wearing no. the new number nine? Yes, Will he be as good as Sergio Aguero? No. You know, who left? And, uh, you know, so many questions. No. High expectations. No. But is it a missing link? Uh, Doctor, no. if you'd ask me, as, um, it's almost written in the stars, understanding that this, in the last few days, like two, three days ago, was 10 years since Sergio Kunagüero actually made that kick that won Manchester City their first major title, um, first Premier League title in 2012. Stop and right now, they've brought in Holland. And if you'd ask me, anybody that comes to Manchester City, 
If you are a goal poacher, you will get a flurry of goals, without a doubt. Holland, probably, it's almost written in the stars. His father has played for the club. So he <laughs> probably has Manchester City in his <laughs> DNA. And I think with Pep Guardiola's style, I think he will flourish. And he will flourish are plenty with goals. But it's not goals, a goals. It's, it's not when Hala comes, you guys win the championship. Okay, we'll, 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 have, we'll have to wait and see. Yeah. We'll have to wait and see. He seems to be doing well from where he's coming. Yes. From, uh, he's Richard great, Jack I can't give it to him, yeah. but no. Anyway, Man City is, uh, you know, a solid team. Yeah, it's a solid team. They're looking like they will. Let's club. see what happens. If they win today's game, the Premier League title is almost as good as in the bag. Anyway, we need to go. Uh, thank you very Always much, a pleasure. Uh, Aaron. We'll see you tomorrow.